So welcome to our first episode of Breaking Grad. Today our question is, what is a physicist? A physicist is someone who works with gravity a lot and electrons and they do a lot of work with that and they always try to seek uh, bigger answers that are out there in the world. So a physicist is someone who wants to understand things, wants to understand the way the world works, how things in the world work. And there's all sorts of different ways that can happen. I mean, you have people that are, want to understand deeply fundamental things like water quarks and stuff like that. And what is dark energy out in the universe? What is a physicist? Someone who belongs on the show Big Bang Theory. A physicist yeah, yeah. is uh, the most interesting kind of problem solver because they don't just do math. They have to be able to do the hardest kind of math and then they have to take everything into account that could possibly influence some problem. So they're way too smart for Earth people. I think a physicist is someone who's constantly questioning and analyzing and evaluating the world around them and is trying to figure out, I suppose, better answers to everyday things. A physicist is someone who studies interactions, and what separates the different fields of physics are the link scales that they consider. From the smallest link scales in particle physics or nuclear physics to the largest link scales in cosmology or astrophysics. A physicist likes physics, does physics things. They do experiments like crash heavy things around and make sounds like sonic waves and lasers and Newton. So what is a physicist? A physicist is somebody who seems to only think about physics. A physicist can be a variety of things. There, there are various kinds of physicists. There are the gadgeteers, there are the, 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 the theorists who think of the, the, the ideas that we all want to do. They're experimentalists who work in the laboratory and try to find new results. Yeah, a physicist, a physicist is a, a scientist who embraces a fundamental discipline uh, which really describes how the universe works. Uh, and I, I found a physicist myself uh, who, knowing physics, the ability to solve many kinds of problems and involve in analysis. And this has been a great thing in my career. Howdy YouTube viewers, my name is Les Sheffield and welcome to the first episode of Breaking Grad, where we bring graduate research at Texas A&M a little bit closer to you. My field of specialization is Experimental Atomic, Molecular, and Optical Physics, otherwise known as AMO. My research efforts can be placed in two major categories. First is the construction of unique molecular beam sources, and second is the analysis of electrical properties of graphene. The molecular beam research really began in the 1950s with the invention of the vacuum pump. This is because you need an environment for your beams to interact without a lot of background interactions. So the majority of the hardware you see behind me focuses on creating an environment which will seal our chamber well enough to establish a, a vacuum where we can let our beams interact. Yeah. Our vacuum pumps are called diffusion pumps and they're actually underneath the chamber. We also use cold traps here at the top, which we fill with liquid nitrogen. So whenever any particles in our chamber collide with the nitrogen traps, they freeze there and are essentially pumped out of our chamber. The molecular beam sources that I've been working on for the past couple of years focus around a hollow rotor that's spun on top of an AC motor. So this rotor here allows the gas to flow through the inside and out a nozzle that's installed at the very tip. Now consider that we can spin our rotor in both directions and change speeds almost instantly. So I've created a means to scan a wide variety of beam speeds without having to change the actual temperature of the gas. So after we've built and characterized our molecular beam sources, we really need an experiment that we can apply them to. For that we've chosen graphene, a single atomically thin layer of carbon atoms. And what we do is we create samples 
we apply leads to these samples, and then we can measure the electrical conductivity after we've characterized the response of our samples to all the varying conditions inside our chamber, we can hit them with different types of gas from our molecular beam sources. So this includes stationary sources, uh, the rotating source that I described earlier, and also a plasma source that we've used uh, to create atomic beams instead of molecular ones. So here's our graphene sample holder. We have our liquid nitrogen tank right here, wrapped in Teflon. And the copper plate here is actually where we hold our sample. The graphene itself is in the center of the beam path and installed on this silicon wafer. After we have a basis for how the transport properties change when the sample is cleaned, we can start colliding different gases on the surface with different collision energies. This is accomplished by using our rotating source and the results will shed light on several different aspects of the interaction of graphene with surface gases. What's your favorite part of research? So the favorite part of my research is that I get to do everything from designing the components to building them from scratch, uh, installing them after we clean them appropriately, and troubleshooting them. The advice I would have for incoming graduate students is to always have questions. Everybody, as we go through our research career, we don't start out knowing exactly what we want to do or exactly what the answers are. So everybody you meet, always have a question ready to ask them, whether it's a fellow student, it's a research scientist in another lab, or faculty. So the hardest part of my research would have to be troubleshooting electronics. When you do so many different aspects of your research, you're bound to find one thing that you're not quite so good at. But at least now I know whenever I rewire my house, I'm not going to shock myself. So YouTube, what do you think a physicist is? See that comment box below? You know what to do. Wonderful stream of consciousness. Yes, exactly. And now you know what a physicist does. <laughs> <laughs>